Well, I, I, I would go as far to say it was done and dusted in the first leg, sure. mm. even though it was only 1-0. Yeah. Uh, only the most ardent fans of United would think... I mean, who'd think that just because you got lucky in Paris, and they did, OK, they got through, but they got lucky because they bottled it and made mistakes. And then you get dominated by Watford at home, OK, you win. But you're dominated by West Ham at home, OK, you win. But you expect them to go to the camp now yeah. with this team and have Messi have a, a quiet game for the second week in a row. I mean, you've got to be, you got to be on cloud cuckoo land to be thought that was going to happen. I mean, really, they took the foot off the gas. It was men against boys. It's nothing on Solskjaer, to be fair. It's not on him. He's yeah. just in the door and he's trying to patch it up. But it, I think it shows you where, where they are. And for those that have said, oh, well, they started well. <laughs> and, and, you know what I mean? What, 10 minutes? You know what I mean? As if Barcelona didn't have any other chances in the game. So I think it's good for Man United, they're out, because their, their biggest fight is not this Champions League. Yeah. Because it's not good enough. It's the Premier League and trying to get in that top four, which, by the way, is a real struggle for them now. Lionel Messi, once again, you look at his numbers this year. 42 games, 45 goals and 18 assists. Yeah, so when Chris Mullin smashed them in the first leg, you thought, well, maybe there'll be a reaction. Well, there was. There was. Well, he got on the ball, and it was danger. Any time that he decided to go with a change of pace, I'm telling you, Phil Jones still spinning. Yeah. I mean, he turned him inside and outside and inside again. It's between his legs and cuts him back, and, and he's doing whatever he wants whenever he wants to, and when he's playing like that, I don't care. I don't care if it's Manchester United. I don't care what team it is. He's playing like that. He's unstoppable. Nobody keeps up with him, and certainly Manchester United was nowhere near the ball to try to challenge Lionel Messi or anybody else in Barcelona. This was, again, talk about a lesson. Why is the hair rubbish in Spain? <laughs> <laughs> what happens to him, Shaq? I, I, I mean, I, all, all you can see, you can just put it down as one of those that happens to every single keeper, regardless of how good you are, and you just pick the worst possible night to do it. Um, who David De Gea has been easily, in my opinion, Manchester United's most consistent player and best player for, for the last three or four seasons. That was just uncharacteristic. It's interesting when you look at that United 11. Mm. Think how many of those players are going to be at the heart of a side that's going to be competing with likes of Barcelona in the future? Because there's so much... As, as, not so mediocrity. Players, There's a, lo a whole lot of mediocrity yeah. in this Manchester United team, which, which you've been saying. This is not a great Manchester United team by, by any measure. The result against PSG papered over a whole lot of cracks. You were dominated in, in both legs against PSG as well. Yeah. But PSG have a habit over the last couple of seasons of shooting themselves in the foot. And, and they do it. Why you come to, to the camp now and, and expect the same yeah. is, is simply beyond me. Yes, you started well. You started well in Paris as well. But Barcelona didn't make the mistakes that the PSG, PSG made. Correct. And they don't have the history that the PSG have in, in crumbling under, under their own self-weight. And then, as, as Ali points out, when, once Lionel Messi gets in this kind of mood, there is simply nothing that anybody in world football could do and certainly nobody in that Manchester You're right. Manchester. There's a lot of mediocrity. A lot. And then they appointed a manager on a whim. Mm -hmm. uh, and by the way, again, Pogba might as well have went and sat next to his manager. Mm -hmm. You know, not blaming Paul Pogba for the defeat, but again, saw nothing from him. Uh, and they're going to have to spend millions, millions, yep. more than anybody else. But the problem mm -hmm. is they're competing the with Real Madrid, as we spoke about before, and Juventus. And is Manchester United and Ali Gunnar Solskjaer enough of a pull if you're a big-name player when you've got the lights of Madrid or Juventus caught in you as well. That's a massive issue for them. Mm -hmm. And, and, yeah. and if, if you have an agent who's worth his, worth his salt, his or her salt, you're looking at Alexis Sanchez and thinking, well, we need to be up in, in that ballpark. And yeah. how many players have, have, can you afford? Listen, I know Manchester United are a very wealthy club, but how many players can you afford to be paying four and 500,000 pounds a week? Let's, let's talk about the reality of, of Manchester United as compared to Barcelona. And it's an image that we saw multiple times. Ashley Young, he's playing left back. And every time there's a goal score, he's trying to give it. Like, Come on, guys, let's go. Let's knock the ball around. You have no chance. And we probably would have done the same thing. Come on, guys, let's yeah. go. Uh -huh. Let's knock the ball around. No chance. You still have Ashley Young playing left back for you. That kind of gives you an idea as to the sort of team that Manchester United is as compared to Barcelona. There is just no comparison.